This is part two of two of our symposium with Nicolia Christie. Sky Blue Symposia, a convivial gathering for stimulating conversation and a free exchange of ideas. We are so glad you could join us, friends. I'm Susan, your host today, and today we have Nicolia Christie. She's kind enough to join us for a new symposium as we continue consciously exploring. Welcome, Nicolia. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Nicolia, you mentioned Neptunian um, love or Neptunian relationships and how they, that's changed. Could you talk a little bit about how the Uranus-Pluto square has been tearing apart the old Venus-Mars relationships and moving us more into Neptunian relationships? and what the differences are and why this is happening to us. Yes. Well, um, I'm not an astrologer, um, as my friends who are astrologers will attest that I have no idea um, how to understand these things. I just look at a chart, and when I look at a chart, I can I can notice what's going on in that chart. I have some basic understanding of astrology. Um, but what comes to me when I start to speak about astrological things is what I'm picking up, uh, noticing, if you like. So I can't answer about the, the Uranus-Pluto square, although one of my closest friends who is a prolific astrologer would be able to answer that in amazing detail. But what I can say to you uh, about Venus, um, Venus, Mars and Neptune love, and I've written about this extensively in the new book, Contemporary Spirituality for an Evolving World. It's a very, very important chapter. It's a, I've called it Higher Love and Sexuality. And it really is looking at sort of um, a higher love and a higher sexuality. And so I've looked at the four levels of relationship, of human, human romantic relationship, which it, it goes from companions to soulmates to twin souls to twin flames. Now, what has been happening is people have been talking about twin flames without understanding what they're actually really talking about because a twin flame relationship is rare. I mean, it's, it's so rare that there are probably very, very few beings on this planet who have had or are in, in quotes, twin flame relationships. The twin flame relationship we meet the twin flame, we re-encounter the twin flame when we are going home with a capital H. It's the last relationship, it's the last lifetime. And so we we split from the twin flame. You know, when we first uh, became, we sort of experienced a human form. And so we, we parted at that point and we come back together at the end and we go home. We don't reincarnate again. If we do reincarnate to this planet again, it's purely and only for service. It is not to do with karma. There is no karma we come in with. We are here just for service as a one. And there are probably, again, a handful of, of beings on the planet who have reincarnated as a one. Um, so the focus, really, what people have been discussing as twin flame relationship is actually twin soul relationship. So what happens is we have the level of companions, which, again, is it's sort of experienced by I just try to find the right wording so I'm not sort of um, saying something that's politically incorrect I just want to say people who are unconscious people who have not consciously awakened in any way uh, they tend to be in companion relationships where they're kind of best friends and you know they sort of just live around each other but they're, they're no great love um, and then soulmates you know you again you have many many different levels from the the most unconscious soulmate relationships but nevertheless they are to the most conscious soulmate relationship and when we are at the most conscious level of soulmate relationship that's when we make the step between the highest level of uh, soulmate relationship we step into the twin soul relationship and the twin soul relationship and again I write about this in depth 
in contemporary spirituality of an evolving world. So I may not give it any justice in what I'm saying right now. But the twin soul relationship is pretty much everything the twin flame relationship is and can be, but is not the twin flame, although the twin soul can actually be the twin flame. But we don't realize this because we have to be at the highest level of human evolution to embrace twin flame relationship. It is not possible to be in a twin flame relationship unless we have become literally perfected human beings. And of course, we know that there's probably a handful of beings on this planet who are or have been perfected human beings. Now, when I talk about the difference between Venus and Mars relationships and Neptune love, is Neptune love is beyond personal. So what you find with a twin soul relationship, twin soul relationship is a beyond personal relationship. It's a relationship when all of the karma, all of the personal healing is done. Uh, there is no more healing to do. So what happens is when we come together in a twin soul relationship, we are together for pure love. We are with each other for pure love. The relationship is one of joy. It is one of ease. It is one of flow. It is one of harmony um, and so many more things. Unconditional love is the is the cornerstone of, the, of a twin soul relationship. And most often, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is a relationship where we join together in service of humanity. And so we, we combine our light, if you like, um, and our consciousness and our intelligence and our gifts, and we, we work together for humanity. And it's a beyond, as I say, beyond personal. Now, anything below, if you like, uh, if we're going to put it on a sort of a hierarchy, anything below a twin soul relationship, uh, that is a conscious awake relationship will fall into the category of soulmates and soulmate relationships are Venus and Mars relationships. They are relationships where people measure love by did I get a birthday present? Did I get flowers delivered to me on St. Valentine's Day? You know, did, did this romantic thing happen? Did I get a box of chocolates on that day? Did I get, you know, the, my favorite aftershave, whatever it love is measured in not entirely pure formats. It's kind of measured on how is that person showing me in a material sense? Neptune relationships have no no basis whatsoever in the material. The material is entirely uh, devoid. You know, it's devoid of material in the sense of being based on anything material. Whether somebody's being jetted off to a romantic weekend away is irrelevant. You know, all that's important in Neptune relationship uh, is the, um, the twin soul relationship is the purity of the connection and that is how I can describe it on a phone call um, but for you know, in-depth analysis of that then it's in the book the new book could you it's briefly so describe the difference between a twin soul relationship and a twin flame yeah twin flame relationship is as I said in a way let's just um, feel into this the, the twin soul relationship is the higher octave, if you like. It's the higher octave of the soulmate relationship. And with the twin flame relationship, this is the relationship where we're not coming back again. We don't reincarnate again. That's why it's so rare. Now, with twin soul relationships, they can be absolutely beautiful. They easily can be um, uh, believed to be a twin flame relationship because they can be so sublime. Yet those beings will reincarnate again. It's only when we've done, we are done here fully, that we then connect with the twin flame and we go home with the twin flame. Now, the twin soul, let's say, for example, we met a twin soul when we were 45, for example, um, and we, we, we worked together and the, the relationship was a pure delight. It was totally pure. Uh, completely unconditional and so much was achieved in let's say till we were 70 we were working in service 80 in service there can come a point where the veil is lifted because there is a veil that if you like um, hides the twin flame where there can come a point where the veil is lifted and we realize this being that we've journeyed with for 30 years and had the most beautiful in service relationship you know in service to humanity and to each other where that veil lifts and we realize yes this is my twin flame now i know this because we reach a point it's it's something you can't know in the mind it is just something that is felt at a cellular level it's a gnosis at the deepest level 
This being is my twin flame. I am not returning. I will not be coming back here. It's done. And the only way we know that is when we have had decades, if you like, or for however long we have to live once we've met that twin soul um, of absolute purity, of harmony, of joy, of peace, of service, of fulfillment. Now, this is another important terminology, fulfillment. The difference between a soulmate relationship and a twin soul relationship is the fact that in soulmate relationships, no matter how subtle it is at the highest level of soulmate relationship, there will still be the subtleties of the need for security. In a soulmate relationship, a twin soul relationship, that doesn't exist. Security needs do not exist. There is just this fulfillment. And the twin soul relationship is it lives in the unknown. The soulmate relationship, even at the highest level, needs an element of the known. And so it's it's very, very complex. And again, I would urge anybody that really wants to understand this more fully to to read the chapter, The Higher Love and the Higher Sexuality, in the new book. But it's a fine line between twin soul and twin flame. That's why twin soul is so like twin flame. That's why it's very easy to uh, believe that a twin soul relationship is a twin flame relationship. But I will say, and I see it all over Facebook, all the time people talking about, I'm with my twin flame and, and I know they're not. You know, I know this is not a twin flame you're with because then suddenly, oh, you know, my twin flame left and, you know, found somebody else they were attracted to. There is no other. For twin flame, that is it. And there's no question. There's never, ever, ever a question with a twin flame that perhaps there's someone else. It is that person for the rest of their lives. So, you know, I see all over Facebook people talking about, and in fact, all over everything I see, you know, twin flame this, twin flame that. And that's not the case. It's the purest, purest, highest expression, highest frequency connection there can be. And twin flame relationships are not even about service to the world, conscious service to the world. A twin soul relationship is conscious service to the world. So we are here, we are combining our light together, and we are giving of ourselves to this earth, this beautiful earth. We are giving of ourselves in joy. With our love, we are sharing it. The twin flame relationship is even beyond that. Your twin flames could go and live on a mountain and not do, in quotes, another thing for the rest of their lives, but just be. They could sit on top of a mountain, mountain just being for the rest of their duration on this earth. And that in itself is the, the gift they give to the world because of the light and the frequency uh, that they, they resonate at. That is the gift for the world. And I've often said that, you know, if we were above the earth, and we were looking down on the earth at twin flame relationships, we would see these little lighthouses, few and far between, dotted across the planet, beaming, pulsing, resonant fields that are going across continents just through the resonant field that these two exalted beings um, create by their presence. So twin flame relationship is you, you, you only, you, it's, a, uh, it's about being and be, capital B-E. That is the context of the twin flame relationship. So that's another difference that we find between twin soul and twin flame. Twin souls will be, and they know how to be to, you know, infinity, but they are compelled, they are driven to do for humanity in service, to share their love. Thank you so much for that. It, I have one more follow up on that. Would you have any insight into people who are in soulmate relationships and have found a twin soul relationship and the dichotomy of loving, still loving their soulmate, but having found something new and better, but not wanting to hurt a soulmate because they, that's a treasured relationship. Well, you know, what I would say to that is it depends which level of soulmate relationship you are resonating at. Because when you are resonating at the highest level of soulmate relationship, and that is the level before twin soul relationship, you are with someone who is in the same space as you. You know, you we, we are only in relationship with a being who is at a level that we are at, and if we then, uh, our evolution accelerates to such a degree, we naturally, that bond 
uh, in terms of the relationship, you, we can stay friends with that person for the rest of our lives, but the bond that's between us starts to dissolve because the frequency it doesn't match anymore. So we would naturally gravitate away from that being, um, and we would have the consciousness. And if we're the highest level of, of soulmate relationship, the consciousness is there with both beings to so to sit down and to have that conversation and to say, you know, namaste, you know, bow and. I, you know, this is what's happening. This is what is, is unfolding in my life. And if we are at the highest level of soulmate relationship, the, the being that we are in relationship with is going to bow back and say, you know, thank you. Thank you for sharing. I understand. This is the point where our paths need to part. You know, we, we, we find a different way of being with each other. It's a co-supportive at that level. It is such a high level. The highest level of soulmate relationship most people on this planet never, ever reach, let alone get to twin soul relationship. You see, what I want to put across in the book is it's very important that people begin to understand these terminologies. They begin to understand the phenomena that these these uh, relationships are, because when we fully understand it, we can start to imprint that understanding in our or activate that understanding in our own blueprint. And we can then begin to accelerate our own process towards manifesting these higher loves if you like in our lives so the highest level of soulmate relationship it's never going to be about what you've just said there because that that scenario isn't going to isn't going to manifest in that way where we don't want to hurt the person we're with because the person we're with is at such a high level of consciousness that that's not how they're going to take it they're going you know you're going to have feelings you see, this is the difference again. What's the difference between emotions and what's the difference between emotions and feelings? And emotions and feelings are very different. So again, at the lower levels of soulmate relationships, certainly at the levels of companion and the lower levels of soulmate relationship, people are locked into their emotions. But when you're in the higher level of soulmate relationship, and I mean really the highest levels of soulmate relationship, you are making that transition between living from an emotional level within the self to living from feeling. Feeling is very different. So when, let's say the example you've just given there, you have that conversation with, in quotes, your, in quotes, soulmate. If you are at the highest level of soulmate relationship, feelings will be expressed. If you are at the lower level of uh, soulmate relationships or a lower level, not necessarily the lowest, but a lower level, then emotions are going to be uh, invoked. And an emotional reaction is very different to a feeling response. It, you know, I'm trying to keep this really simple. Um, but yes, in, in a nutshell, if you meet your twin soul and you're in a, in quotes, soulmate relationship, you are going to be in a soulmate relationship that is the highest level soulmate relationship. And there is no such thing as hurt that can happen at that level because it's so, so high. What I would say is be... For that, for that person that you're you, you're sort of giving an example of, for them to be mindful that perhaps it's not their twin soul that they've met, it is a much higher octave of soulmate relationship that's calling them to go to higher levels in themselves, uh, an evolutionary level to do with relationship. I, I I can't imagine it would be a twin soul relationship because it, no hurt can happen at that level of sharing with a soulmate. Uh, it's it's time for us to dissolve this because I'm moving on to the next. I need to move on now to the next level of experience, or however however that would be discussed. Thank you so Thank much you. for that, Nicole. You uh, you recently wrote about a light quake, saying a new and overriding superluminous intelligence has recently stepped forward as an active influence for the Earth, permeating a newly activated evolutionary love grid replacing the old paradigm mental matrix from which it's which itself is activating dormant levels within the heart psyche and consciousness of individual the collective and the planet would you please tell us more about that i'll do my best um, i wrote that again that that's kind of in the moment and uh, that terminology light quake and it's like all words isn't it it's a word that <sighs> Uh, is used to try and describe a feeling, a sense, a, a, vis a vision, 
uh, that was had. The, how I would um, respond to what you've asked there is that, um, you know, we have the mental matrix. This is what we've all been living in, locked into this mental matrix. And as we evolve, as our vibration, our frequency begins to, ru- to raise, we start to um, extricate ourselves from the mental matrix. Now, What's been happening leading up to 2112, and this again was in that 13-year uh, quickening period, is the uh, there was the um, the heart grid. Now, again, it's just words because actually the heart grid just doesn't even begin to describe what this actually is. But we have to use right, human right. words there, so we'll call it that for now. This heart grid that's been there has been has overlaid humanity, as it were. Um, it's always been there but it has been dormant, has been inactive. Now, what was happening in the 13-year quickening period is that it was beginning to prepare to become active so that as we extricate ourselves, us, those of us who are awakening, awakened and enlightening and becoming enlightened, as we are extricating ourselves out of the matrix, mental matrix, we are then able to move ourselves and locate ourselves into a unified collective high frequency field which we will call the heart grid Uh, it's about love so from mind to heart if you like so when i when that came through light quake which feels like it was a you know decades ago that's how it feels to me when you actually just mentioned it there it's this energy it's awake and an awakening energy of light and what i could actually see was this uh light quake opening up which is this this heart grid because there are so many beings on this planet now who have and are extricating themselves from the mental matrix who are now ready to plant themselves to locate themselves into this unified collective high vibrational high frequency field heart grid and so that's what i was seeing and that's the process that's actually happening and as we shift out of the mental matrix uh, which you know is a prism you know, it really is a, right. a prison for the human being. Um, we are freeing ourselves, we're liberating ourselves, and we are meeting again, if you like. We are meeting in a different setup altogether. And that's the best way I can describe it. So this light quake that's been moving around the earth like a tsunami, a light tsunami, um, is really is just a mirror of the awakening that is happening within awakened and awakening beings. Uh, as we move into 2013, post-2112. It's been a mass, mass awakening because that date, 2112, also was a mass awakening. You know, it was an evolutionary leap for humanity. It was an unprecedented moment in the individual and the collective process, be, be it the mass or be it the, uh, the, the level, the, the community, the global community of light workers. Uh, the, the consciousness transformers. Right. I, think, I, don't, I don't know if that responds to what no, you. No, you you enunciate words that I've had rolling around, or or the the feelings that I've had rolling around. You've attached words to that. I thank you so much. Thank you. So, in these new and changing times, is it enough to send light and love into the world? Or is engaging in the world also necessary, you know, with social, cultural, political, and ele- ecological issues? Yeah, yeah, a, a great question. My stance on that is that we are all here. We are, each one of us are here. And when I say us right now, I'm talking about, you know, consciousness transformers. We are all here with a specific, uh, let's call it mission. You know, a specific task. We are ambassadors for the light, as I say, emissaries for the light. We all have a specific task. Now, I wrote a, a big piece a few weeks ago. Um, it's on my Facebook page, my website. It's a call to unity to light workers, a call to unity consciousness, and it was to light workers because um, there were some, in quotes, light workers who were disregarding and dismissing and reacting in a very judgmental way towards those beings who are out there in the field, sleeves rolled up in the, you know, the political, uh, environmental, ecological and so forth, global authoritarian uh, fields trying to, to make the changes. And they were saying, you know, all we need to do is just we just need to sit and radiate light and everything will be fine. Well, I don't agree with that. I agree that there are uh, those of us who have incarnated to do just that. 
And that is absolutely essential. It's completely needed. But at the same time, there are also those of us who have incarnated, who have volunteered to roll up their sleeves and to get into the, the, the grid itself, to, to incarnate into that grid, uh, to start to open up pathways and open up avenues for people to begin to leave it, um, for it to change, for it to transform. What we want to do ultimately is uh, close this mental, this old mental matrix down that has ruled humanity with a rod of iron uh, for all manner of reasons, which is I've written about in another article, what in, what in the name of peace is going on, which can be found on my website and my Facebook um, page as well under notes, um, is, is, is to basically begin to close that grid down and to really to, to relocate as many uh, beings as we can over to the heart grid. So we start to, this unified collective high frequency field basically, so we can start to uh, manifest uh, living the prophesied golden age and thousand years of peace. So we have these two overlays, if you like, and it takes a brave and courageous uh, and intelligent being, a highly evolved being, to want to literally put themselves, place themselves in the center of that matrix and in, in the midst of the, the, the densest levels of that matrix. Um, and these beings need to be honored. So, you know, I have to, and that's why I wrote a call to unity consciousness uh, recently as an article, because I, I, I had to say, come on, you know, we need to support those that are actually in the field with their, their sleeves rolled up while we're sitting. Some of us are sitting in the heart grid meditating and really amplifying the light holding the current you know uh, i've i've heard uh, people that go to um, see john of god in brazil and there's the current room and these people are selected to go and sit in this room i'm sure you know about this and literally just hold the current so that the entities that um embody incorporate uh joao do todayus um so that he, they, they can actually incorporate his body. So the current has to be held, a frequency has to be held in order for them to do that. So those of us who choose to sit in the heart grid, as we call it for now, are holding the current. That's what they've chosen to do is hold the current. But they equally need to not to judge and to honor and respect those of us who have chosen to get into the, the nitty gritty, as it were, and go into the dangerous places the uh, dense places to uh, to penetrate those places and those spaces with the light of the being that they are um, that's the the best way I can respond to that question thank you, thank you. kind of understanding that we have you know warriors and healers and and warriors shouldn't feel bad that they're not healers and healers shouldn't feel bad they're not warriors but then as you were speaking that the, the words that came to mind was, Radical meditators, radical gardeners, radical economics, radical voices, yeah. you know, yeah. just changing how we do things. Yeah. I mean, unity consciousness is about co-support, collaboration, uh, co-creativity, respect. It's very, very important to support each other in whatever role we've taken on. We are, we are evolutionists. We are here to evolve humanity. It's, you know, it's what we've incarnated for. You know, this is what we're here for. We've chosen to be here at this critical time in humanity. And it, it's actually a blessing to be here because the times we're living in, I, I believe really from 1999, probably 77 when um, Chiron came in and maybe even when the first mass waves of uh, light workers started to come in around 1939, 60s were very important as we know. But really I would say from 1999 when we, we entered the phase of the quickening up until the end of 2016, and then we have 2050 as a very important date for humanity as well. Um, we need to be unifying and unifying our consciousness and living unity consciousness. See, this is another, um, how can I, something I, I speak about a lot is it's very easy to talk the talk. Very, very easy to do that. And I can't tell you how many people I come across, I would say 90% of the people I come across talk the talk very easily. But when it comes to walking the walk, that's a different story. What goes on behind closed doors is not always what is being written about, what's being talked about out there in the world. And it's very important that with unity consciousness, rather than just talking about it as an ideal, 
that we are actually making it a reality. And it's not a reality when one, in quotes, light worker judges another, in quotes, light worker for, uh, for their choice, what they're doing in this lifetime uh, to serve humanity, because that's what we're here for. We're here to evolve. We've come here at this time specifically, specifically for this reason. And it is a privilege to be here at this time. This is something that we're living in these times for the, the beings that we are. And when I say that, I mean the consciously awakened beings, the light beings, if you like. Um, this is a, a time, this is a lifetime on in this dimension that will be etched in, in our souls uh, until we literally make it all the way back to source and we dissolve, dissolve into source energy, which for me is the ultimate um, journey. This is the ultimate destination for every soul uh, is to dissolve into the the light that is source. Other people would call it God creator. I call it source with a capital S. And until we get to that point, you know, this is something that stays in our, our psyche, our soul, if you like, being here at this time. It's a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it reminds me that I'm lucky to be here at this time. Yeah. And to use your words earlier, it's you're telling me when I should get excited. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's exciting to be here at this time. Yeah. You know, I had this thought earlier. I was actually uh, driving um, from A to B, as it were, and I was uh, turning things over in my mind. And I had this thought about, and I thought I'd put this out as a post, I think, write about this, that, you know, people, um, I feel people have lost, um, maybe never even had it, a sense of purpose. And purpose is so important when we have purpose we feel alive when we have purpose our lives make sense when we have purpose we trust i mean uh, being aligned with our purpose is just the most incredible um life transforming event of our lives and um i was thinking about all the people in the world who feel lost um all the people that are filling their time filling their space because they are bored there's so many people in the world who are bored, who are lost, and the boredom creates depression. Then they take drugs, they go into the retail therapy scenario, they get involved in consumer consumer addictions and so forth. To 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 if you like fill this hole that is this this place of boredom, this place of feeling lost and lonely. So many people on this planet feel lonely, even if they have families and relationships, they feel lonely. And I wanted to say to everyone and anyone that feels lonely, feels bored, feels uninspired, feels depressed, or any of these feelings, align with your purpose. Because if you align with your soul's highest, higher purpose, you can never feel any of those things. You can only feel inspired. You can only feel filled each day with um, inspiration and energy and uh, motivation. And you feel good about yourself because you feel you're actively doing something to serve humanity, to serve the light, to serve all the kingdoms on this earth. And then I thought, so if I say that, what might somebody say to me? And they might say, yes, but how? I don't know how. I don't know what to do. I want to do something. I don't know what to do. And the question is, if you really do want to commit, if you really want to free yourself and really begin to experience who you really are, and that's possible for every single human being on this planet, then you need to be fully committed to that. And if you're fully committed to that, you can then step into your purpose. And your purpose can be then joining forces with other beacons, if you like, uh, on this planet to support them in what they are doing to spread the light, to spread the word, if you like. And in that, you find your purpose and in that you find your freedom and your liberation. And this is something I'm only speaking about this now. I had these thoughts a few hours ago that I'm going to write an article on because I feel like I want to put a call out across the world in a way and in a way show the way to how people can free themselves up from this, again, this mental matrix, this matrix people have got stuck in. Because everything to do with the consumer culture that we live in on a global level is, um, how can I say, it's a, it's a band-aid, if you like. It's, um, it's, it's something people have turned to, to not have to feel the pain, you know, I think the existential pain 
of um, what happens when they're not filling their time because they haven't found the place they fit. And those openings are happening all over the planet. There are beacons, if you like, um, can we say standing at the helm, the helm of huge light ships on this planet who need a crew. They need uh, a team working with them. And, uh, and that's the call I'd love to put out, really. Contact anybody that you, you are inspired by, that you uh, respect and say, how can, I, how, can I, how can my being, how can my presence serve this message and serve you to get this message out into the world? Um, and therein, they, they, they find themselves. And this is another avenue out of that mental matrix. The time has come now to really extricate ourselves. And I feel there's millions of people on this planet. They really do need, they, they just need the, the path opened up for them. And then they can step onto it and they'll be, they'll be running you know, in, a, in the right direction. Um, I feel that very strongly. It's, it's, it's coming back to what I was saying, the huge difference between talking the talk and walking the walk between the ideal and wouldn't it be lovely if the world was this, that and the other and actually saying, yes, it would be lovely and what part can I play in that? And everyone can play a part. Every single human being on this planet can play a part if they choose, but particularly light workers, uh, the consciousness transformers. Thank you. Thank That's, you. That's, it, it feels it, it, like I had a key that was waiting to be turned and you just turned it. Just go and be love. Thank you. Nicole, you know, that what you just said has has left me speechless. It's like you're reading the backs of my eyelids and laughing with me. I, it's incredible. I before I was struck speechless, I was listening to you to our discussion and wrote a a poem, and I'd l love to read it to you. No, yeah, that would be wonderful. Struck soundly with seven arrows. Scouting in a wilderness amongst psyches hardly known, looking in as brighter light uncovers cherished stones, used to be a lonely job while working quite alone, now in singing with the spirit birds in greater numbers flown, expanded in dimensions of a wider, deeper home, brought into this consciousness and greater closeness grown, being in this moment present, fuller blooming roses blown. Sitting round in quickening and fireproofing clothes, speaking of a silence from which gnosis grows, slowly healing woundings from which blood still flows, applying pressure, keeping close to what was chose, while dancing in the rhythm that every body knows, and standing with this brightened sun as rising lighting shows an image that involves into a field seeding as it's sown. Namaste. Nicolia, thank you so much. I, I hope I'm, well, I know I'm speaking for all of us. It's been an incredible uh, conversation we've shared with you, and it's been very amazing. It's like you've spoken in your voice for all of our voices, and we are so appreciative, and we wish you so well in what you're doing and support you and we will look forward to when you come back and speak to us about your new book thank you again it's been lovely having you well may i say a few words just to close my my time with please you? please well now firstly i want to say i so value and i so appreciate you contacting me and uh, inviting me to spend this time with you and uh, I just humbly uh, appreciate the space that you've given for me to share, you know, what 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 I'm with and and what I have to share, um, and I appreciate you listening um, the way that you all have. Thank you very very much for that. And um, you know, the uh, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, coming back to what I was saying about purpose and people connecting with their purpose and how that will transform their lives, is that some people, you know. When you're caught in the mental matrix, there's that sense of, oh, I, I'd like to give myself more to this, but I've got bills to pay and I've got this to do and I have to pay for that and so forth, you know, caught in that money matrix. And I understand that, responsibilities. But what I always say, and it, it, it happens every time, I know people that will um, back this up, is that when we, we give ourselves 
um, from our hearts when we we give ourselves in selfless service to love and for the light and we ask for nothing in return we say I'm here how can I be of service um, to whoever we, we might want to approach in that that process the higher dimensions the luminous ones in my case the higher dimensions will always always um, gift gift back and people that have supported me and my work in on practical levels uh, for nothing they they I, I can't pay and they they don't ask for anything magical transformational things happen in their lives so I'm saying that not for the reason for people to do it but just to say that when we move into a different kind of e- economy if you like uh, exchange economy where the rewards that come back to us may not be monetary the the value that they they have is is far 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 beyond so i just wanted to leave the listeners with that that thought that there's a lot that needs to be done and uh, in any way that anyone can help with anyone out there that's doing this work um please step forward and uh, they will be gifted without any question by the heavens so thank you very very much everyone for listening Thank you, my lovely friends here, for having this conversation with me today. And uh, I just, yeah, I just send love and light and bow to everyone. Thank you.